Surrealism is a, a movement which has been initiated by poets. The exhibition comes from the Musée National d'Art Moderne at the Centre Pompidou in Paris. It features over 180 works, including paintings, films, collage, photography, sculptures, uh, surrealist objects. And there's also quite an exhaustive look at the, the books and magazines that were associated to surrealism. Over 56 artists are represented and it's a very comprehensive look at the movement um, through what is the best collection of surrealist art in Europe. And it's a full survey of surrealism which is shown here in Brisbane, coming from the very early expression of the pre-surrealism with de Chirico and Marcel Duchamp, to the very late expression in the late 60s. And what we can see is that there is a revival every 10 years. So the idea was really to develop the full story of surrealism. The figure that looms large over this entire exhibition is André Breton and he was a French poet who is also regarded as the founder of surrealism and the movement is very much tied to him uh, in that he formalised the movement through the writing of the manifestos. He defined the movement and he was the kind of central figure around which many of the other artists and poets gathered. He was also the figure that many of the other artists and poets broke from to create other aspects and other dimensions of surrealism which are you know, as important. The start of the exhibition is at around 1919. It's, um, the first section is, is called From Dada to Surrealism and traces that early period in which certain poets and writers were separating themselves off from Dada and founding the new movement of Surrealism in Paris. The other figure that emerges in this early period is Marcel Duchamp with his bottle rack, which he bought from a basement department store in Paris. He asked his sister to sign his name on it. It was one of his very first ready-mades. And of course the ready-made was perhaps the most uh, revolutionary act of 20th century art in the sense that it was completely disclaiming the role of the artist in that sort of traditional authorial way, the creator, the artistic genius. It was saying that an artist could select any ready-made object, just call it art, and then it would become art. We also have a very curious element in this room, which is the sculpture by René Magritte. Very few people have seen these sculptural works of Magritte. He's much more known as a, as a painter. In 1929, many things happened, including the arrival of Salvador Dali in Paris, and he creates a huge stir and introduced his idea of critical paranoia, which is the idea that you use your paranoid obsessions to create your own sort of uh, iconography, your own images. And 1929 to 1939 is a period of great change and different figures emerging as the leaders of surrealism. 
Particularly important is the emergence of Georges Bataille, who was, um, he called himself surrealism's old enemy from within. Bataille was interested in the fact that in, in ancient cultures, the sacrifice of animals is in, it was always intertwined with ritual prayer and it was something that was done with great reverence. Whereas today, animals are sacrificed completely separated from any ritual. There's a tremendous contemporary relevance, I think, here with um, the current debates around uh, you know, live export of animals and the idea of what goes on in abattoirs and in slaughterhouses. You have a wonderful suite of paintings by André Masson, and Masson was someone who was very much like Bataille. He believed that human nature was governed by very uh, extreme drives, the death drive and the, the pleasure principle, the sexual drive, and that there were, these two were always in competition. The other important thing to, that emerges in the period of 1929 to 39 is all of the different media that are suddenly very important to surrealism. So it's not just about painting, it's about particularly photography, collage, film. And you see a very important uh, group of works by Max Ernst. Once the Second World War breaks out and many of the Surrealists have to flee Europe and France, many of them go to North America, particularly New York, so you suddenly get this mixing of completely different traditions and ideas. And I think what's particularly interesting is to see this wonderful Jackson Pollock painting. You can see the beginning of the much more expressive style that of course a few years later would become completely abstract in the drip paintings that, for which he's best known. And then in the last section of the exhibition, which is the, the 20 years from 1946 to 66 when Breton dies, there are some very diverse works in this section, huge transformations in art in this post-war period. A work that shows the continued relevance of surrealism as well as the kind of ongoing uh, interest in mythology is the extraordinary sculpture object by uh, Victor Browner, the Lutable Wolf Table. Dorothea Tanning's uh, room 202 in the Hotel du Pavot. There are these very curious objects in this room coming out of the wallpaper I think it's a really interesting piece in that it has this very uncanny, uneasy feel to it in terms of the theatricality and that idea of creating that immersive space. What makes uh, today surrealism so powerful now? Uh, maybe the, the power of the images themselves, because they were made not to be uh, an element of, of aesthetic satisfaction, but a kind of drug, a kind of something which has to be shocking. And you can see in the film, you can see in the painting, it's very powerful and it moves you. And I think it's still moving for all the visitors but also because the definition of surrealism it may be the general definition of creation itself. It means you have to look inside yourself and express yourself and express your fantasy without any constraint. <laughs> 